Well, my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today I wanted to do this for a, a week or two. Um, so, I think his name's Sten, um, sent me a comment saying, I'm confused about braking procedures like everybody else's because there's this hard braking, girly braking bullshit thing that everyone bangs on about, and no one can seem to make their mind up about it. So, he then sent me this article saying, it's uh, MotoTuneUSA.com Breaking Secrets and he said, look at this article, you know, a lot of people cited this article eventually, you know, people kept sending me emails going, look at this article, what do you think? So I've read the article, I've printed most of it out, there's a lot of jargon that I didn't print out, we've even got some pretty pictures. We are going to go through the entirety because this is gold, absolute gold. Hey girls, be boys. Superstar DJs. Here, Here we, we go. go! Right, so let's do this shit. So, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out um, parts of the article, the descriptive, you know, there's the the actual website, you're going to type it manually, there'll be a link in the description. I have omitted certain bits because it's just rambling, but I picked on quite a lot of it, to be quite honest, there's um, a lot here. If I get time, I will actually, because I've actually put my comments in here just to remind me, not remind me, I've actually already started to do the um, replies so you can actually download this. Um, so, it, you know, I don't know why, but that's what I did. I was literally just going to release this for people to look at, but I thought, fuck it, I'll do a video. So it says, these are all, like I say, it's complete, not, not completely taken out of context, but the little snippets of whatever little quotes. So he says, um, numbers of people have done direct comparisons between my methods and the owner's manual methods. This is obviously breaking. Um, what, how? What do you mean direct comparisons? To do a direct comparison, you are going to have to buy two of exactly the same bike. They were built pretty much the same serial numbers one after the other. And you are going to have to do a, a manufacturer's braking and a hard braking. And then you are going to have to then run the engines for about 50,000 miles and then periodically every thousand miles take them engines apart and then measure the clearances of everything and basically measure the performance of everything but a sample of two is not enough so you'd have to do ten for it to be statistically believable no one's fucking done that so you're talking rubbish like I said how was this analysis done? no one's done this analysis people have just ridden the bikes and then years later they've got another bike and then ridden that and gone oh I did a hard braking didn't seem to make much difference I only had the bike for ten thousand miles and then sold it idiot uh, the results are always the same. A dramatic increase in power at all RPMs. What a crock of shit. Show me. Show me the numbers between two bikes that are exactly the same. One had a hard running and one had a manufacturer's running. You know what I mean? Show me something. More power, increase in power at all RPMs. Well, we'll get there. This is just his quotes of what it does. The biggest factor is that the engine manufacturers now use a much finer honing pattern in the cylinders than they once did. There's no citation of this, but we'll get there. Uh, this in turn changes the braking requirements, which they have. They've taken this into consideration. Braking procedures from the 1980s are longer than they are now. So they change their manufacturing tolerances, or they get better tolerances, they're using tighter clearances, and because of that, that's how they make more power over the years, and because of that, they have changed the braking procedure accordingly. You fuck with. In addition, there is a lot less heat buildup in the cylinders from ring friction due to the finer honing pattern used in modern engines. Right? But most of the heat from piston, from rings, or most of the heat that goes into rings, is not from the friction, you muppet. That's why we have oil scraper rings and oil control rings to lubricate. If you have a piston ring that runs in a dry bore, it is going to fuse, uh, maybe a stroke or two. You know what I mean? It's... Most of the heat in piston rings is from the piston. It gets that heat from the combustion process that's just happened. Combustion happens. Heat sucks into the piston. Pistons are aluminium because they're light, quite strong, stiff, and they're good thermal, they've got good thermal conductivity. Because of this, they conduct most of their heat into the rings, and the rings are what actually conducts most of the heat to the cylinder. When that heat goes into the cylinder, the heat is, uh, you know, um, the heat transfers from the cylinder walls into the actual coolant because the coolant is cooler, hence coolant. Um, but also, 
the uh, compression ratios have gone up over the years. Um, so the next thing he says is one of the most critical parts of the engine build process is the braking. No matter how well an engine is assembled, its its final power outputs, its final power outputs, it's all up to you. Well, yeah, it is. That's the problem. That's why we have braking procedures. Is because it is up to the end user to actually look after their engine and do a, a braking procedure. You know what I mean? It is up to you. This is one of the only things that he said that's actually fucking smart. Um, what's the best way to brake in a new engine? Question mark. The short, the short answer is run it hard. Um, but like I say, forget what the manufacturers say, which is a good point because I have some running procedures out of several manuals. XJ6, Yamaha, 600cc. This has got an R6 engine in it. It says, engine braking, there is never a more important period for the life of your engine than the period between zero and a thousand miles, or 1,600 1, kilometres. For this reason, you should read the following material carefully. Since the engine is brand new, do not put excessive loads on it for the first thousand miles. We'll get into the reason why later. Um, but it says, avoid prolonging operation of 5,800 revs a minute, or RPM. Uh, after 600 miles of operation, the engine oil must be changed and the oil filter cartridge or element replaced. Um, from 600 to 1,000 miles, avoid prolonged operation above 7,000 RPM. And then from 1,000 miles and beyond, the vehicle can now be operated normally. Next, what's this? This is an R1 from 2002, which says pretty much exactly the same thing. Literally exactly the same thing they've been doing some copy and pasting. R1 2016, braking procedure. Uh, since the engine is brand new, do not put excessive load on it for the first thousand miles. It is exactly the same paragraph. But let's go outside of Yamaha. Let's look at GSXR, the GSXR 1000 2008. The first thousand miles are the most important for the life of your motorcycle. Proper braking operation during this time will help ensure maximum life and performance from your new motorcycle. Motorcycle reliability and performance depends on special care and a restrained exercise during the braking process. A braking period, should I say. It is essentially important that you avoid operating the engine in a manner that would expose the engine parts to excessive heat, which we'll get to. It then has a running procedure, which I seem to... Oh, there we are. The running procedure is for the first, uh, again, thousand miles. It's just the fucking same thing. So then we look at um, KTM, so another manufacturer. This is not a Japanese manufacturer, so it's not just Japanese that are all onto it. This is the 1190, the RC8. Uh, KTM says, do not exceed the specified engine speed and load during the running period. The guidelines state, state Maximum engine speed during the first 620 miles or 1,000 kilometers do not exceed 7,500 rpm. After the first 620 miles, 1,000 kilometers, 10,500 uh, rpm. Avoid full throttle operation. So that's from KTM. And I did have another KTM one. Aha, here we are. So this is from the KTM manual. The, this is the 250, 400, 450 and 525 SX, XC and EXC. So these are off-road uh, four-stroke dirt bikes that it says, and I've highlighted this, uh, even very precise machined engine components, blah, blah, blah. We won't, we won't talk about why, and we'll talk about why in a minute. The reason for this is do not load the engine more than 50% of its, capaci of its uh, capacity during the first three hours of operation. Now this is different because this is a road, this is a race bike. You know, this is meant to be used uh, for competition, and obviously you don't have ages to do thousands and thousands of miles. And because of the stress that they put these engines under, wide open throttle, no load, and all the rest of it, and then all of a sudden shit loads of load. Um, these are off-road dirt bikes that are four strokes, and even they have a running procedure. You know, it's not really long because it's not a mode of transport; it's actually a sport bike for for a sport for racing. Um, besides, besides, the engine speed must not exceed 7,000 RPM for the first three hours. Avoid going full, full throttle. In the following 12 hours of operation, you must load the engine up to 75% of its capability. Use the motorcycle on various types of terrain, road, easy, off-road trails. So basically don't load it up too much. 
So now you've got loads of manufacturers, not just from your, you know, you've got your mid, your medium uh, XJ600, you've got your uh, Yamaha R1, but let's step away from Yamaha, let's look at Suzuki, let's look at KTM, and then we've gone to KTM for their off-road bikes and all the rest of it, and even they have a fucking um, braking procedure. So, no, the fact of the matter is, is the manufacturers say don't run it in hard, and they built the fucking bike. Now, you could always say this, and people think they know better, so let's go more into what it says. You know, he has reasons. This is what this entire article is about, he has reasons. So it says, uh, from the actual gas pressure itself, I've just nicked a bit out of here, it is basically explaining um, spring force, you know what I mean, uh, in your cylinder, because they seem to hone, hone in on, <laughs> they seem to hone in on, um, it's the rings being bedded, that's their only reason, that's why they say hard breakings and all the rest of it. Um, actual gas pressure, it passes over the top of the rings and gets behind it and forces it outwards and downwards, but you missed that bit against the cylinder wall. So basically what he's saying is that you have a ring gap like this, you have your cylinder wall, you have your piston ring like this, the, the combustion gases get in here, behind it, and force the ring outwards. That is exactly right, that's how it works. It also applies pressure here, and here, and here, and fucking everywhere. So it's forcing the ring down into the groove, which is quite important, because if it doesn't go down, then it can float up and then it, it, basically the combustion gases come just back around the rings. It has to push it down and push it outwards against the cylinder wall. Right? This is all true what he's saying, but he didn't mention the downwards bit, which is important. The problem is, is that no rings are, uh, that rings are far from perfect and they must be worn in um, quite a bit. You see, these are quite a bit, right? All right, you know, fair enough, we'll, we'll, we'll let that go. Uh, quite a bit in order to completely seal all the way around the bore. No rings seal all the way around the bore, you fucking muppet, because every single ring has a fucking ring gap in it. You know what I mean? No, but he's using this as, he is using this as a reason to go on. Uh, if the gas pressure is strong enough during the fir engine's first... If the gas pressure is strong enough, what the fuck is he talking about? During the engine's first miles of operation, open that throttle he puts, then the entire ring will wear into the cylinder surface to seal the combustion pressure as well as possible. The highest combustion pressures you get in your cylinder are when the engine is in the middle of its power band. The reason is, is the power band is all about engine breathing. You know, getting, uh, basically completely filling the cylinder the best you can and then squishing that, compressing it and all the rest of it. However, the difference between uh, Right in the peak power, right in the peak power, or peak torque, should we say, peak torque and down low when you're at, you know, 3,000 RPM, the, com the compression pressures in that cylinder aren't wildly variant. You know, we're not talking, oh, it's fucking, you know, 8,000, 8, 800 bar, between 800 bar and 10 bar. It's nothing like that, the fucking idiot. What's he talking about? You go wide open throttle or not, if you go wide open throttle at low RPM, the engine then has to pick up and you're still not in the power band. It doesn't increase the pressure in the cylinder. He's fucking, he's just, he's just, he, people read this and go, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, if you're harder on the bike, you put more load on it, there's going to be more pressure. No, it's not the way it works. Fucking hell. The throttle position does not affect, is not directly affecting the pressure in the cylinder. It's complete rubbish. You know, if I just sit there at tick over and go full throttle, the pressure in the cylinder hasn't just dramatically increased. Fucking hell. It's just, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. The honed, the honed crosshatch pattern in the cylinder bolt acts like a file that allows the rings to wear. The rings wear, quickly wear down the peaks of this roughness regardless of how hard you run the engine in. What well, about? This is his quote. <laughs> Let me read that again. The rings quickly wear down the peaks of this roughness on the home, the cross hatching, regardless of how hard the engine is running. What? No, I get what he's saying, but what he's saying is exactly the opposite of what he's just been banging on about. It's a contradiction. He's contradicting himself, like a muppet. Brilliant. Anyway, let's move on. Here's how to break in the engine properly. There are three ways you can break in an engine. On a dyno, 
on the street or off road, motocross or snowmobile in brackets, or on a racetrack. Where else are you going to break it in? The moon? And I know what people are going to say straight away. You no, know, you can just sit there and have it on idle and just sit there and rev it in your garage. Who the fucking hell is going to do that? You just brought a brand new bike. You're breaking your engine in. By, well, one, you're not doing load and all that, putting load on it and all the rest of it. But number two is, you're just going to sit there for about a half an hour just revving... Fucking idiots. You've got to put load on it, obviously. Uh, on a dyno, warm up the engine completely. Oh, fucking hell, here we go. This is warming up engines before you run them in. Uh, then using fourth gear. Now, all of this doesn't make sense to me because there's a lot of things missing. Do three half-throttle dyno runs from 40 to 60% of the engine's maximum RPM. Well, 40 to 60% in the middle of that is 50, and you're going half throttle, which would make sense. But I don't know why it's read it twice. Let the engine cool down for about 15 minutes. Now, remember that. Uh, do another three at three quarter throttle, or 40 to 80%, which isn't three quarters, 75% would be in Muppet, of the engine's, action, engine's maximum RPM. Let it cool down 15 minutes. Remember the cool down. Do three full throttle dyno runs from 30 to 100%. I think he's on about wind on, but he's not. He's not being. It, it, this, is, this is the instructions for you to follow, and they're not really good instructions. And then at the end of it, it just goes, then go for it. It's just like. <laughs> so, remember that, that when he said, let it cool down 15 minutes, he goes, no, if you are using a dyno with a brake, it is critical during braking, braking in that you allow the engine to de accelerate fully on its own. Don't use the dyno brake. The engine. This is brilliant. Yes, that, that bit's true. The engine vacuum created during closed throttle deacceleration, otherwise known as engine braking, sucks the excess oil and metal off the cylinder walls. That is the dumbest thing you said in this entire thing. Sucks the excess oil and metal off the walls. Now, if he's talking about p particles from the horn, obviously because you've been ragging the shit out of it, and basically burning your rings in. It just, it's just a stupid way to write it. I don't know what he's fucking talking about. Important note. Many, re many readers have emailed to ask about the cooldown. And if this means heat cycling the engine. Now I'm going to have to have a fag. Uh, well, not a, a chooch and a drink. Because I can't take this. This bit, next bit's hilarious. So we're going to talk about this article. Um, what I will say is there is a part two to this video. I have to say this now because people are unaware that there's a part to this video. So once we go through this entire article that I'm about to read out, um, there will be a part two to this video pretty much within two or three hours of this one being released, um, where I explain, we, we're gonna go through this entire article and then I will explain um, why this is bullshit after that in the next video. Um, so just so you're there, you know what I mean? Because if I put it at the end of the video, people might not make it that far because this is a long video. You know, I don't blame you, so on and so forth. So, right, let's crack on with this, and it's fucking hilarious. 